Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you a step-by-step -step plan what you can do to actually earn your first hundred bucks as a native Android developer. You will know that there are tons of ways to actually make money as a na native Android developer. Most people will probably have some kind of dream to publish your own app, get millions of downloads, get millions of dollars for that passive income. And yes, that is an amazing way to make money as an Android developer, of course, to make your own app. But I must tell you that is the hardest way, by far the hardest way to make money. And I will show you a much easier way here that actually to get started with that, that you can also make your very first hundred bucks as Android developer. And I kind of assume here that you already know Android quite well, because if you don't know it quite well, then I would first of all learn it, of course, before thinking about making money with it. And that means you should be able to write solid apps with like an MVVM architecture using an uh, API with retrofit and yeah, local database maybe with room. That is really what you should be able to do before thinking about making money as Android developer. So let's get straight to the point. In my opinion, the easiest way you can earn your first hundred bucks is by simply doing freelancing. Um, just, yeah, not considering a real employee job here. I don't count that. I, I really mean things you can do from your desk right now and earn your first money as an Android developer. And that's freelancing. Let me explain why. Because in the end, you already have everything you need to do that. So if you want to publish an app, you of course need to code that whole app, first of all. Then you need to worry about marketing and uh, yeah, basically selling that app and getting users, which is by far the, the hardest part about that. Or if we think of maybe making courses and selling these, like I do here on YouTube, you of course, first of all, need some kind of audience you can actually sell these courses to. If you just start making courses now, then you have a big time investment for these courses, but nobody to sell it to. And to get to this point where you have people to sell it to, uh, that's actually take, going to take a long while. So I think freelancing is actually a perfect opportunity to, to just sell your time when you start. And now most of you who actually already considered trying out freelancing will probably have the problem of finding the first client. Or maybe you already tried a lot to actually find your first client. So the rest of the video, I will actually talk about how you can actually do this. So you will get a step-by-step -step plan how you can really find your first client who is willing to spend the money you're worth and your skills are worth. So you can actually earn your very first money as a freelance Android developer. And this overall is a three step plan. Let's get to the most important step and that is step number one. And that is you need some kind of proof that your client can actually see what you're capable of doing. So if you were actually a client, then you would of course only hire someone where you're certain that this person can do the job. And yeah, the same will apply to your potential clients that you will encounter. So there are mainly two ways you can actually show off what you know. On the one hand, those are testimonials. So just other clients that tell you or that write something for you. Hey, I worked together with you and it was a really great experience. I really enjoyed it, it was reliable, um, quick work, quality work, whatever. So something that other people can see, oh, that person already worked with other people together and they were quite happy with it. Now, when you're starting, the problem is there are no clients you already had. So testimonials is something you can't rely on here. But luckily there is a second way you can actually stick to to also show off what you know, and that is a solid portfolio. So you can simply build some projects on your own, some Android apps, that look really good. You can also use some designs from Dribble, for example, build an Android app and then simply put these in your portfolio. Ideally, some kind of website where you can just have a well-designed website around you as a person, what you know and just what kind of products you've already built so the clients can see, oh, that's, that's a pretty cool project. That guy is probably knowing what he's doing. So I'd suggest that you just start with three to four projects that you show off just really your best project you've ever built. If you don't have any, then really just start building some because 
if you don't have any testimonials and you also don't have a portfolio with project you can show off, then you don't even need to start finding clients because it just won't happen. Then step number two is you go to Upwork and register in your account. In my opinion, if nobody knows you, you don't have a social media brand or so, then Upwork is the best platform to actually find clients. There are a lot of clients on that platform, also a lot of trash jobs which you should ignore, but actually just start creating a profile on Upwork and then you need to focus on making your, your profile really solid so that it actually gives your potential clients and those who visit your profile the impression that you actually know how to do their job and that you know how to do and how to how to build very stable and solid Android apps. So in your profile, you basically first of all start with two to three sentences that explain to the client very crisp and short why you can do the job, what makes you an expert basically. So on my Upwork profile, for example, I mentioned, hey, I have a YouTube channel about Android development where now over uh, 50,000 people follow me. That's really good um, proof basically that I know what I'm doing because otherwise you guys wouldn't really follow me, right? But of course, most of you will probably not have a big Android YouTube channel. That's not an issue. You can also just write, okay, I am an Android developer for now. X amount of years and I really built so many cool projects in it. Um, yeah, just, just write something that's really crisp and short that the client can easily see, okay, this guy seems to really have experience. Then as a next thing for your profile description, what I would do is I would have a bullet pointed list of those skills that you actually have. So that, that should be all technical skills. For example, if you're a native Android developer, you write, okay, Room databases, um, retrofit, unit testing with JUnit. You can say UI testing. You can say I know MVVM, clean architecture. So basically your technical skills in a bullet pointed list, which is very easy to read for your clients. So they can just quickly scan this list and see, okay, oh, yeah, this guy actually knows what I need here. Then in Upwork, you can also add some certifications if you have these, like if you have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree of computer science, of course, add this. If you have something like associates Android developer certificate, then you can also add that. If not, if you don't have any certificates, that is still not an issue because yeah, you can simply show off what you know by showing your projects. And something you should also shouldn't actually ignore is in Upwork at the very bottom of your profile, you have a tab or a section for other experiences where you can just have yeah, some kind of paragraph where you can write anything basically. And I, for example, use this that I again explain, hey, I'm doing YouTube and I'm, I'm a mentor for Android development on YouTube for this amount of years. Um, I have 10 years of coding experience in general. Just stuff that doesn't really fit into the other sections in Upwork can be put into this other experiences because the more text you actually have in your profile, um, of course, the more quality text, um, the more it seems to your client that you have something to, to do for them, that you actually are able to do the job. Because on the other side, if you don't have a lot of text um, and you just have maybe one sentence that introduces yourself, then they will really think, okay, this guy will probably not know what he's doing if he can't really write that much about himself. But of course, really only write text that's really helpful for your client and that helps them to realize that you can do the job. Just don't write any garbage text uh, just because Philip said <laughs> you need a lot of text on your profile. And let's get to the last step here, step number three, and that is of course approaching clients. On Upwork that works by simply sending proposals. So clients will basically have job descriptions. They say, okay, I need an app to, you know, social network app for my family, <laughs> whatever. And then you can apply to this job as a freelancer there. It's super important that you actually read the job description there. Um, I already have hired on Upwork. And when you do that, when you hire someone, you realize how many people actually don't even read the job description and just copy paste their default text and send it to you. And that would be an, an instant disqualification from my side. And most clients will think the same way. So read the job description very carefully. So you really know what your client wants from you. And then you write a really custom written uh, proposal for this client by also mentioning some details they actually mentioned in their job description. So they see you actually read it. In regards to your starting rate that you actually propose to your clients, 
Uh, it's a little bit tricky because if you don't have any testimonials, then it's hard to start with a very high rate, even though you have the technical skills. So you probably have to start with a lower rate. Um, if you have good technical skills in Android development, yeah, I found 30 to $40 an hour a good starting point. And then after time, if you realize you actually, um, if, if more clients want you to work for them, then you can actually um, accept and uh, more than uh, you have time, then that's the point where you have to increase your rate. And yeah, basically to, to make sure that less clients want your time because you're more expensive, that you just have the right amount of clients that fill your time in the end. So in the proposal itself, you first of all show that you've read the job description and you show the client, you quickly explain them that you're actually capable of doing their job. Then I would always include some links to your work because then a client can easily click on that. That's something super quickly. They get a quick impression because usually clients get so many proposals there and they won't read all of them from A to Z. And if you are actually a native Android developer, that's something that I would always highlight. So that's something how I, what I actually always did on Upwork when a client wa specifically wanted a native app because there are tons of use cases where you have to have to use a native app, where you have to build that, where a cross-platform app is not the right thing. Then I used exactly that as a selling point. So I said, hey, you know, I only build native Android apps. That's what makes me an expert. I don't do Flutter, I don't do React Native. Um, so that's something the client will actually value and they will see, okay, this guy really knows native apps. This guy does not do Flutter apps or whatever. No, this guy is an expert in his field. So overall, definitely value high quality proposals over just bursting out copy paste proposals that won't work in most cases. And if you actually build that habit of sending two to three high quality proposals a day, then it's very likely if you have a solid profile and solid products to show off that you will really find your first client within a few weeks. And yeah, that's really the whole magic behind it. The more clients you get, of course, and the more testimonials you have, the easier it will get to find more clients. The start is really the hardest thing here, but it's... In, in your 100% influence, you can start today with actually registering at Upwork, doing the things I told you here, and then just sending out these high quality proposals to potential clients. And yeah, if you really do that, if you put in the work and you register at Upwork, do everything I told you here, then it's very likely that in a few weeks you already have your first $100 on your bank account. Of course, that's just a very small amount here. As a freelancer, you can make tons of more money than just a hundred dollars, but it's a very good starting point. And I know how it feels like when you make your first hundred bucks, That's that feels better than when you make your first thousand. And if you actually feel like you need some more Android freelancing tips, then check out this video where I also talk about that, give you some more tips, how you can actually get some clients on Upwork.